Finding self-proclaimed experts who can talk the talk on TV is easy. Finding people who actually know what they're talking about is more difficult. Our cover story is reported by Susan Spencer of 48 Hours. Let help you keep interrupting me, sir, please. Over and over and over again. From the ranting on the radio. They're doing far more, folks, than just cheating. To the babbling in the blogs. And the carping on cable. It's not, it's not that they're the, it's not that they're the center Why are you of the screaming? campaign, Chris. Just try to escape other people's opinions. Pundits are everywhere, and they're almost always at full boil. Chris, thank you. Chris, I don't know. The better pundits are people who either can pretend that they know a lot about something, so they're an expert at pretending, or they're an expert in the actual issue. And also with us is J.P. Frere, managing Just editor. Just 26, conservative so commentator J.P. Frere aspires to pundit seen. stardom. Hey, how are you? Well, let's start. And already is a regular what on cable news. Right so far? Describe for me what your mindset is when you walk into the studio. I want to destroy the other person. You want to destroy no, the other person? <laughs> no. no, I don't think you are kidding. No, no, it's it, not not at all, not at all. It's more that. I want to get my point across as succinctly and quickly as possible. So what is the biggest pitfall then that you worry about? Saying something stupid. Saying something stupid probably didn't much concern early pundits. After all, the word itself means learned man or scholar. It comes from 17th century Sanskrit, but the concept is much older than that. Socrates, Plato, Buddha, Jesus, <laughs> what are they doing? They're giving their opinions about the world, about how the world should be. The idea of trying to shape public opinion, that's something that has been around since the beginning of time. T.J. Walker spent 15 years as a political commentator on the radio. And for him, modern pundits owe it all to just one man. The year was 1951. William F. Buckley wrote God and Man at Yale. Then he went from books to speaking My guest today is a to a TV talk show and really was the first modern multimedia pundit. His apostasies from the left are however so numerous as... William Buckley's firing line ran for more than three decades. But he never had to face the dilemma of today's pundits. Too many shows and too few real experts. They always want fresh faces. The consequence of that is that you wind up having to get people that you're not really certain about their credentials. What percentage do you think really know what they're talking about? Oh, heavens, I think probably about maybe 40 to 50 percent. That's depressing. Suppose by now you're thinking, hey, I know a lot. Maybe I could be a pundit. Well, believe it or not, you can go to pundit school, where using an arsenal of cameras, lights, and props like this one, you too can learn the fine art of talking, expounding, and of course, interrupting. We coach people to look their best and sound their best anytime they're on TV or talk to a reporter. Because, says T.J. Walker, now CEO of Media Training Worldwide, when that camera's on and the light's in your face, you get scared. Star pundits know that how you look is often more powerful than what you say. You have to come across as forceful. You can't say, well, I think, or it seems to me, or maybe, or looking up. Don't look up. It makes you look uncertain. I'm helping people communicate. People Walker not only teaches clients where to put their eyes, but also move your hands. What so to do with their hands? Elbows bent, fingertips almost touching, and then when you're talking, just gesture. And what not to do in a chair. If you sit back, relax, this is the worst way to sit. It makes anyone look fat, rumpled, and just blah. Talk doesn't come cheap here. What do you charge? I charge $7,500 per day Wait a minute. to be trained. Per day? Per day. $7,500 a day? Yes. Is that pretty much the going rate in this field? I hope not. I hope it's at the high end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always yeah. raise it. Okay, we have speed. Stand by. But even pundit school grads have to admit that looking like an expert is quite different from actually being one.
Are you a better expert if you know a lot about many things? Or And no one knows that better than UC Berkeley Business School professor Phil Tetlock, an expert on experts. I think a lot of the expertise you see in the media serves more of an entertainment function. His book, Expert Political Judgment, examines the accuracy of roughly 30,000 predictions made by almost 300 supposed experts. He finds a definite trend. There's going to be a negative correlation between how uh, telegenic you are and how famous you are and how accurate you are. So the better you are on television, the less accurate you're likely to be? Well, we, we found a negative correlation. The, the, the lower profile, more boring experts are more likely to be accurate. Yeah, try to sell that to a TV producer. It's a hard sell. It's a hard sell because TV producers aren't likely to book the pundits Tetlock calls the foxes. People who have complicated thought patterns, but who tend to get things right more often. Their opposites he nicknames the hedgehogs, a TV producer's dream. They're more strident, they're more enthusiastic about their ideas, they, they offer better sound bites. Doesn't the public have a right to expect that people who are on television opining at least have some expertise? They do have expertise. They have expertise on opining. And in many <laughs> cases, they don't know any more than your crazy uncle who's had too much to drink at the Christmas party. Oh, great. So, you so where exactly does that leave the viewer? I think that the American television audience is nowhere near as, as close to the doe-eyed idiots that a lot of people think them to be. Because they can watch and they can see when someone's genuine. They can watch and they can see when someone knows what they're talking about. But can they really... before the economy crashed. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is real. Look, if there's one Their willingness to go along with expert opinion doesn't surprise Dr. Gregory Burns, a neuroeconomist at Emory University who studies how our brains react to such information. In a nutshell, he says, our brains pretty much check out. If we bring someone in who is kind of has this billing as an expert, it's just much easier to, you know, turn over your decision making to that person. You can even see it on brain scans. So we're looking at a snapshot of the brain. The areas that usually light up when we're weighing our options go completely dark when an expert offers an opinion. And you notice <laughs> the key structure for value judgments, nothing. So we asked our expert, Dr. Burns, would we be better off ignoring the experts? I mean, my advice is to have confidence in your own decision-making. And use it. And use it, yes, absolutely use it. But if they make $8 million on that book, I will eat my shoes. And as for the endlessly opining pundits, I think it's just entertainment. It's just simply attention-grabbing. People like conflict. People like professional wrestling. They like ultimate fighting. That's a part of what two pundits fighting is. Sometimes, of course, the experts and the pundits are even right. Just keep that grain of salt handy. I'm going where the sun keeps shining.